Fall is right around the corner. It's time to take a look at your planner and update it for the new season. y'all. I'm Elisa, the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com. And today we're going to talk about resetting your planner for the fall season. I know it's August. We're not all the way into fall, but for me and for a lot of people, it is like back to school season and the middle of August, beginning of September feels like a fresh start, feels like the last push towards the end of the year. And it feels like a great time to switch over your planner and make sure it is working for you during that season. This is something I do throughout the year. Um, instead of just blindly going with whatever's in my planner and keeping it there, it's nice to take a moment to flip through, to see what's working, to see what's missing, and to see what you want to uh, continue with for those next few months. So in this video, we're going to flip through my planner. I'm hoping that it's going to help inspire you to flip through your planner, take out the things that aren't working, add in the things that you're going to need in the coming month, months, whatever the case may be, um, and kind of reset your planner and get reinvigorated for the next season of life. All right, let's go. Okay, so we're not going to do too many decorative changes. That can happen at a different time if you're wanting to switch things over. Um, for me right now, I have uh, this beautiful cover from Live Love Posh on my planner. I have my little initial charm, which I am loving, and... Uh, sneak peek, I hope that these are going to be coming to my shop at some point in the near future to add to your planners. Um, but we're going to open it up. I'm not going to change out too many things. We're just going to kind of flip through and see what we have going for us. So this opening, it would be wonderful to change out some of these papers. We'll get to that. We'll get to those moments. We'll get to all of that. Um, we no longer need July, so I can take this out. I have all the way through, this is my pre-planning. I use these monthly planners as an opportunity to do some pre-planning to make some lists. I have them all the way through 2025, June 2025, um, which I find helpful because now that the kids are going back to school, we're going to start filling these in um, a little bit more. So that is kind of, um, that should be all set. These help me out so much as far as pre-planning goes. But what I want to take a moment to figure out is the things that I want to include over here. And I think we're going to use perhaps um, a little bit of decorating, but let's take a moment to re-establish what should go on the back. I love these quad boxes. And when you're resetting for a new season, it's the perfect opportunity to reset some routines, some routines that may have gotten a little bit out of whack, out of control, or life just changes and you have to kind of reset your routine. Um, so I'm going to add a couple decorations and then let's talk about doing some routines. Okay, I want to take this opportunity to say that resetting your planner in a new season for a new month is not so much about the decorative part, but it's about going through and evaluating what is working in your planner, what is not working in your planner, and being flexible enough to take out the things that aren't working and to update and make changes so you can have a planner that is super effective for you. Some people like to change things out month in, month month out. Um, I like to really reevaluate, go through my planner bit by bit um, with the seasons because it just makes sense to me to kind of reevaluate. And it's not necessarily the weather seasons. It might be, you know, my kids are home for the summer. It might be that, hey, it's, um, it is winter. It is cold. We're not doing anything. It might be seasons of work. We all have different seasons in our life and taking time to reevaluate, going through your planner page by page to see what you need to update is a really important part to making sure your planner continues to work for you throughout the entire year. Okay, so the two routines that I want to refocus on are a morning routine and an evening routine. So I'm just going to label these first boxes up here. Now that the kids are going back to school, now that it's um, a different temperature, and you know, there's all kinds of 
reasons to revisit a routine. It might be that it's not exciting you anymore. There might be a chance that you're not in a routine because you didn't like the routine you had picked and you need to change it up. So my morning routine will look something like this in the fall. We're going to go with 5 a.m. wake up. Then we're going to do quiet time. followed by a workout. And then the new thing I'm adding is stretching because I have not been doing that and I feel like I need to, that it's important to add that in. Wake up, quiet time, workout, stretch, and then shower. And then that will be kid, kids slash school, getting them off to school. And then planner time is really important with me checking in and then I will start my work day. So that's going to be a morning routine that I'm wanting to follow and go back to. It's been a little wonky. I've had to move things around during the summer. So this is what we're going to kind of go back to. Evening routine. Some of this is going to seem silly, but for me, writing it down is going to be super important. Um, so I'm going to do a phone break. It's way too easy for me to stay scrolling on my phone. So a phone break. Then I want to wash my face and brush teeth, obviously. I want to do some evening journaling. That's a new thing for me, but I think it's going to be a nice way to wind down my brain and then reading. So that's a new evening routine. I will be honest, I don't really have an evening routine. I go a million miles an hour until I collapse in bed. So we're going to go with this to see if we can reestablish some healthy routines and some healthy boundaries in a new season. So that is all set down here. This one's going to be projects that I am working on. For me, that is currently prepping for school. Cleaning out the garage is kind of this ongoing project that has lasted all summer. Um, I want to write cleaning out the kids' rooms once they go back to school. I kind of go into their rooms and start to clean some things out. I'm going to put kids' spaces. Okay. Then this one... Um, I could do some different things here. It could be goals for the season. It could be looking forward. I might leave that open. I'm not totally sure. And I don't want to fill it in just for the sake of filling it in on this video. I kind of want to give myself that freedom to come back to. So love that I have some routines established. Oops, let's cut this out so I can pop this in my planner. All right, so that is ready to go. Um, otherwise, we're getting into this section, which is my monthly section. This is going to stay much the same um, as we're going through the month, so that doesn't need to change. We have the daily section. I am wanting to change some things up, so I want to actually um, take a moment. I'm going to take these out. I want to add in some different daily pages because I will have a little bit more time um, I'm wanting to do a little bit more of a check-in in the morning, and I feel like something like this will help me with that. So I have a few of these left. This is my daily journaling layout. I mix and match this in with my daily dashboard layout. This is the daily dashboard that I have been using. You can see I have several pages decorated, but I want to mix in a little bit more of this one because we're updating it for the season and we took out some ones that we tried that didn't work and we're going back to kind of the stand the standbys the ones I love and I do like switching up my daily layout because um, for me it just makes it more interesting to change things up so we'll stick those in there now we're going over to wellness we've been tracking fitness that is going to continue to work 
well for me. So we're going to leave the fitness tracker there. Journaling, again, that is going to stay the same. I've switched to journaling in the quad layout, which I have enjoyed very much. So we're going to stick with that as well. And all of that is working just fine for me. There's been a time in the summer where I took some things out that I didn't want in my planner anymore. Um, and now we're back into getting, getting the things that I want and need in my planner. So let's do some things here. This is back to school shopping. That one's kind of done. I want to leave my about me page in here, my places to go. We're going to take this page out. This is a good one. And some of these other pages that I love and that are beautiful, but I didn't end up using. And I don't need them in my planner anymore. We're going to take out some trackers because we have less free time right now. So this is not something that is happening on the reg in the planner. So we're going to take this out and this, all of this stuff out. We'll put it away. And now we're left with some regular note pages. Now, here is what I'm wanting to add in here. Because it's a new season, I need some different note pages. So here's what I'm thinking. What I need are a fall bucket list page. And I want to start a gift list page because we're getting into the season of gifting. We're getting into when um, I may start shopping early for Christmas. And so I want to have a page where I'm organizing all of that information so I don't forget what is what and what is where in all of that business. So I'm going to pull out one, two pages, and we're going to create a fall bucket list, which I think will be great. And I think creating bucket lists for different seasons is just a fabulous way to go and to like focus yourself for that season. So fall bucket list and then um, a gift page. Let's do it. These fun type of pages or these extra pages are one way that you can really customize your planner um, within a particular season to work for you and to inspire you throughout the season. So having this bucket list and having it be a reasonable list of things that my family might be able to accomplish this fall just keeps inspiring me and bringing me joy throughout the whole season. So yes, it takes a little bit of time to do this. No, I'm not going way over the top with it. And you don't have to even just making a list in your planner that you can reference is going to go a long way to help you kind of envision what you are looking for um, in your life for the next few months. These are also the types of things that you can add into your planner when you don't have a lot of other things going on. I've had several of you send me messages, which I really appreciate. You are definitely not the only ones out there that want to do a planner, are really into decorative planning, but feel like you don't have that much to plan for. Well, creating fun things like this, even if it's within the pages of your weekly planner, maybe you do want to create a fall bucket list, but you're going to use the sidebars of your uh, weeks for the the whole month of October to create just little different bucket lists, little goal things that you would like to do. Um, because maybe you don't have a lot of appointments. Maybe you don't have kids schedules to keep track of. Maybe your work schedule is the same week in and week out. Think outside the box, some other fun things that you could track in your planner or that you could add into your planner um, that give you that satisfaction of getting to decorate, of playing with the supplies, of having fun with the stickers without the pressure of then having to like fill up the pages. Creating a bucket list for each season keeps me on track because as a type A person, I am much more likely to just plow through. We have lots of activities going on with my family. We have all the kids sports. I have a very um, busy, time consuming business that takes, you know, a lot of effort and it can be easy for me to just plow through and plow ahead and not take the time to enjoy the current season. I'm in, in this case, enjoying the beautiful uh, fall season, which happens to be one of my favorite. So um, giving me a direction, helping me focus on these things. I love apple picking. We haven't gone apple picking in a few years with my family. That is like high on my bucket list. So now it's on the bucket list. Something I can do to make this really functional for me is to take this bucket list and then look over at my calendar and go ahead and pick out times or at least um, blocks of time, weeks that I think that, oh, you know what? This might be a good week to get this done, to have the movie marathon to go for the evening walks, whatever the case may be. I take the bucket list. It's not just a pretty page, but I, then I take it and apply it to 
our family calendar so that we can schedule these activities because they are important and scheduling in the fun stuff is just as important as scheduling in all of the appointments and all of the sports and all of the work to do's and all of the chores, all of the things you got to schedule in those moments to really enjoy uh, the season of life that you're in. And that bucket list might look different depending on um, your particular stage of life. Now, some people prefer to wait for their gift list or their gifting list until um, they have their holiday planner set up. You might wait until it is a Christmas theme or holiday theme page. However, I know that I need to start thinking about this now. If I don't start until November, then it's going to be mad chaos. So uh, mine's going to be pumpkin themed. I'm going to pull and we're going to do pumpkins because guess what? As I'm shopping for Christmas, it's still going to feel like fall. So we're going to enjoy this in my planner. A couple of hints or a couple of tips to make these pages more useful. Sometimes when we keep them located in the back of our planner, in the notes section, whatever the case may be, you're going to see me just make the worst sticker mistake here. I'm trying to make this straight and then I shifted it and then it got, oh, oh guys, it was a whole thing. It's still fine. It's fine because this is my planner and it's not going off to anyone, but man, oh man, I should have tried harder the first time around. Anyway, like I was saying, to make this page a bit more functional. Instead of just leaving it back in the notes section, this is something that I could put in the middle of my monthly. Is that pretty when I open up my monthly? Well, it's not as pretty as if I just saw my full monthly. However, it is something that I'm going to encounter on a regular basis, which will do a couple of things. It'll remind me to go ahead and write the things that I've been thinking, the ideas that I had. And then it will also um, remind me to be thinking about those. So if I am thinking about it, great. And I will remember to write it down. If I haven't already been brainstorming and thinking of presents and things like that for this upcoming season, uh, it'll remind me. So if you find yourself making these beautiful pages and not actually using them in your planner, Think about where they are located in your planner. Maybe they need to have a more prime real estate spot that you are going to encounter a bit more. I do hope this video kind of encouraged you or inspired you to take a deep dive into your current planner setup um, and take some time to evaluate going into this fall how you want to finish out your year, how you want your planner to work for you, and to make those adjustments so that you can end the year feeling really strong and really good about your planning system going into 2025. As always, I will link all of the supplies that I use down in the description box below. So be sure to check those out. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button. All right. I hope that you have a fabulous day. And as always, keep it creative.